Welcome dear students, this is Dr. Hadi here and you are watching Medical Globe by Dr. Hadi. I brought a very special topic today for you people that is uh, importance of lipids. It is special if you need it, if you uh, watch it till the end. Then of course you will love that video, you will love that lecture and that lecture, that topic is the importance of the lipid. It will not be a summary today, but it will provide an, an in-depth knowledge about the importance of the lipids. So let's start with the importance of lipid. The first, the very first point is the lipid serve as a main constituent, main part of the cell membrane. Cell membrane, uh, if we use the word biological membrane, then it will be more good to say because the biological membrane is present in in the cell membrane in the mitochondrial membrane and even in the nuclear membrane so let's see how the lipid help in the uh, cell membrane we know that cell membrane this is a cell okay, the diagram is of cell and this is the cell membrane the cell membrane is a semi permeable membrane why we use the word semi-permeable? Because it allows some things, some molecules to pass through, but it does not allow some other substance to pass through it. So it is a semi-permeable membrane. This is a sort of regulation, means you cannot enter everything inside the cell. If you have a factory, if you have a, 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 a special area, a special department, so you will definitely uh, hire some security guard at the gate so that the, the, he or she will check uh, which person has to come and which has not to come. So here, the cell membrane must contain some sort of this facility to enter some molecules and to prohibit other molecules. So this is done through the lipids. There is a sp some lipid in the cell membrane that regulate the entry of the substances. And that credit goes to the phospholipids, a kind of lipid that we will discuss in the detail. So this is the first membrane. If there is no lipid, there will be no transport, there will be no regulation, there will be no stability of the cell and the functioning of the normal functioning of the cell will not be possible. The first importance of the brain. Now come to the second is the vitamins. Vitamins are the essential part of the uh, living body. There are two main types of vitamins one is the water soluble and the second one is the lipid soluble especially today lipid soluble vitamins are very important from the uh, lipids point of view because we have some vitamins like vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k these are four vitamins and these are uh, fat soluble vitamins these four vitamins or are also derived from lipids. They are made from lipids. The first one, vitamin A is, if, if you study vitamin A, it, 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 it contains a lot of functions. It's, it has its own chemistry. But today, only we know that vitamin A helps in vision. It gives us a normal vision. Deficiency of vitamin will disturb the vision process. It will cause a disease called night blindness. And second vitamin is vitamin D that helps in the calcium balance. It, uh, it also uh, provides us a healthy bone. The deficiency of vitamin D causes bone problems. Deficiency of bone like rickets, osteomalacia. And vitamin E. Vitamin E is uh, an antioxidant it helps in the breakdown of the free radicals that are very hazardous very damaging to our body tissue so it is a, an antioxidant plus it also helps in the reproduction and then there is vitamin K it helps in the coagulation of blood it helps in the 
coagulation of blood during injury do you know have you ever noticed it that blood stops why it is because your uh, blood contain vitamin K that helps in coagulation of the blood so these four things are actually they have different names but they are lipids there's a second importance so for every student for any medical students it is very important for him or her that he or she should learn about the lipids if you know the importance of lipids your body will compel you to study lipids more and more into the depth that's why i i think it is very important now for every student to have a go through the importance of lipids first and then we have hormones there are different hormones different types of hormones uh, among these there is some hormone called steroids hormones steroid hormones and these hormones are number one testosterone testosterone the male sex hormone that helps in the production of sperm and it also bring the secondary sex characters like beard uh, like thickening uh, of the voice and so on male characters in the male you know and then it also include the development of the sexual organs second one is um, estrogen that is the um, female reproductive hormone these two hormone helps in the development of the reproductive structure and the reproduction a lack of these two hormones will leads to the infertility no reproduction no population that is why lipids once again got the credit that they, they got they, the lipids have a very special importance because of this reason and then we have prostaglandins prostaglandins is not a single molecule but prostaglandins are a family represent a family of molecules that we cannot cover them today we cannot cover them all today but i would like to tell you that these are the molecules in different structures that they serve different role in the body the first one is the they act on smooth muscle smooth muscles are present at two special places that is the mm, in in the in your lungs that is alveoli tubules sorry bronchioles that is bronchioles or in simple words air tubules air tubes where it helps in the these are involved in the constriction and dilation look the diameter of this pipe is greater than this one in this stage it is constricted and in that stage it is dilated so a patient of asthma will not like his or her air tubules in this state a constricted state in the dilated state the air flow will be mean uh, will be maximized and in this sort of constriction and dilation the prostaglandins are involved smooth muscles are also present in the blood vessels so the second one is the blood vessels blood vessels blood vessels also undergo constriction and dilation the constriction of the blood vessels the dilation and constriction causes a change in the diameter of the blood vessel if your blood vessel are constricted blood vessel become like this and there is a chance of increased blood pressure and when the blood vessels become dilated there is a chance of decreased blood pressure it means that prostaglandins are involved in the regulation of the blood pressure as well so this credit again goes to the lipids 
because prostaglandins are uh, lipids and the third one is the inflammation it inflammation is a general word that we use in our daily life that when some injury happens to your body and then the process that follows the injury that is characterized by the reddening and burning is called as the inflammation so inflammation is your body's response that is essential so what are the molecules involved in the inflammation is it, it is actually the prostaglandins there are several molecules of prostaglandins with the different names and then at uh, fifth we have the fuel reserve and thermal insulator just like uh, a car and in any other vehicle they use petrol or diesel our body also need fuel but the fuel of the body is not petrol or diesel it is glucose glucose is the main fuel source of the body sometime if glucose is deficient in the body there is a decrease in the level of the glucose then our liver will provide as the glucose because stored glucose is present in the liver if the liver glucose is also decreased then our body will start switch on another pathway the body will start its heat or energy from the lipids it present in our body so lipid is a secondary source as well that is why we use the fuel reserve because fats is also stored in our body right there is some uh, special areas in the body where the fats are stored then we have the thermal insulator thermal insulator means that lipids help in sustaining your body temperature around your blood vessel if it is your skin that is your skin fine that is your skin that is the inside of um, your body and that is outside so here below the skin you will notice there is some lipids present below the skin and that lipid will help to regulate to maintain your body temperature because let's suppose in the winter season there's a chance of your body to that the that the body temperature get decrease get lowered so what will happen this lipid will act as an insulator insulator means something which does not allow the heat or current to pass through you hold uh, some electrical equipment with the help of some insulator or even a, a, a cloth with this cloth if you hold the the electrical equipments there will be no chance that you will get the shock or current and even uh, you, your hand will remain safe from the heating effect so the cloth act as insulator similarly below our skin there is lipid it this the lipid act as an insulator and it will not allow your body heat to pass out secondly the same lipid you will also find around the blood vessel that is the blood and this is a blood vessel around the blood vessel there is again lipids and this lipid will also act as an insulator to maintain your body temperature so that usually help in the winter season then the last one is signal cofactor and pigments there are lipids that act as a signaling molecule between one cell and another cell i have already recorded a wonderful video lecture on this topic cell to cell signaling mechanism in pharmacology but uh, today once again i have to discuss it with you that inside the body one cell is in connection with another cell there is some sort of connection just like we people connect with one another through social media to mobile phone but one cell is connected with another cell through with the help of special molecules and these molecules are some of them are carbohydrate but some of them are lipids as well so as a signaling they give signal to the cell okay signal molecules and then we have uh, 
cofactor. A cofactor is the uh, is is a non-protein part of the an enzyme. Enzyme is made of a protein, right? But enzyme need another non-protein part that is called as cofactor. If the cofactor is available with enzyme, then there is a chance that we will be having a successful metabolic function because enzymes are involved in metabolic functions. Metabolic functions are the breakdown process, the breaking process and the making process that are continuously happening in our body to sustain some uh, functions and uh, to provide some functions to our body. So these are met these metabolic functions are under the control of the enzymes and enzyme itself need a non-protein part called cofactor. So not all cofactors, some cofactors are also made of uh, lipids. So the last one is the pigments. Pigments are those are the coloring substances. You can uh, memorize it with uh, you can get it by discussing the word uh, photosynthesis in plants. In plants, we have some pigments that absorb light and helps in photosynthesis. But in animals, the pigments refer to those substances which get oxidized or reduced, and they are involved in the oxidation and reduction processes oxidation and reduction these both are collectively called as redox reaction and these reac reactions finally give us energy through electron transport chain so the overall topic of today was the importance of lipids i hope you people uh, got the idea if you got the idea give us a like and also subscribe thank you take care